to my drug habit towards the end I started uh, getting very paranoid where I thought people were after me um, I used to hear voices uh, really bad my name is Peter Howell I was uh, born and raised in the city of La Puente I'm 37 um, happily married got three beautiful kids I'm a loan officer uh, what I do is I help people with the financing uh, to purchase a house um, I have four siblings three brothers and one sister uh, I'm the middle child I was raised by good parents. Um, my dad did whatever he could to, to make sure there was food on the table. We had clothes on our backs and uh, he worked a lot to make sure we, we um, were in good school. So put us all through private school um, and uh, he, he just worked hard. He was always working, uh, my dad. Uh, I was a, a decent kid, um, hyper. <laughs> uh, I pretty much was average. I loved sports, loved playing sports, loved football. I was into boxing when I was a kid. Some things to, to, to look back on is uh, my mom and dad, um, they did fight a lot. Um, my dad did have a drinking problem. Um, but other than that, I can't say we were kind of in a broken home, but you know, there was some things that uh, my dad did. He, he drank every day and he would go to the bars a lot. He wouldn't drink at home. So he was either in playing pool or playing darts. Uh, growing up as a kid, um, I would be with my mom trying to locate where he was because he would basically go from bar to bar to whatever tournaments he might have been in. When I was in fourth grade, uh, I got hit by a car. I was, uh, like I said, I was a super hi hyperactive kid. Um, I remember getting out of school and um, running around with some kids. I ran in the middle of the street and I ended up getting hit by a car. I uh, ended up dislocating my knee. Pretty rad. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, they had an assembly for me at school and everything. It was pretty cool. <laughs> After high school, um, I wanted to become a cop and I uh, ended up getting the DUI before I was uh, 21. Uh, it kind of crushed me, kind of crushed my dreams. Um, I thought life was over. You know, I was young and kind of immature, but um, I had graduated from Rio Hondo Community College. Um, I went through, you know, the, all the classes and uh, that was my heart. That, that was where my heart was. <clears throat> and when I got my DUI, uh, they suspended my license for over a year. Um, I couldn't do the job that I was doing. I used to work at a police station and, um, you know, I kind of was broken from that. Um, and I, I remember uh, coming home just kind of, you know, very sad and like kind of crying, like thinking my life was over. Um, and it kind of just, <sighs> from there, I kind of was just hanging around the wrong kind of people and, you know, going to a lot of parties and drinking a lot, drinking heavily to the point where I'd black out. And I got introduced uh, to doing drugs, to crystal meth. And um, one thing led to another, you know, a snort a line here, do a line there, um, and then it just started happening more often. Uh, eventually I started uh, smoking crystal meth, and um, I remember when I started smoking it, it just turned my life upside down, uh, put me into uh, a lot of crazy situations, um, very depressed, um, had no, no drive. I was just basically, my, my everyday thing was just wanting to get high, um, wanting to, to just be by myself and, and, and get as high as I could, you know? Um, living that type of lifestyle, it'll catch up to you. Uh, eventually, I no longer wanted to go out, no longer wanted to party. Um, I basically just wanted to be by myself and do drugs. And that led me to, to being up, you know, several days out of the week, uh, literally. Um, I'd be up for seven days, go to sleep for four days, get up, do it all over again, be up for 10 days. Um, and that type of lifestyle really, really messed me up. Um, to my drug habit, towards the end, I started uh, getting very paranoid where I thought people were after me. Um, I used to hear voices uh, really bad. Um, there was one time where uh, I thought I was uh, surrounded by deputies. Um, and the crazy thing is, is you guys hear me when I talk, when I tell people this, they just are like, whoa. But to me, they were real. To me, like it was like just the way me and you are conversating right now. Um, the voices that I heard were, it was just like, they were right outside my doorstep, you know? And um, these deputies were uh, telling me to put my hands up. It was like four in the morning. Um, and uh, I just remember that in a sense, I arrested myself. So I like turned on all the lights in, in my living room, uh, got down on my hands and knees, uh, put my hands behind my back and was telling the deputies, you guys can come in now. Uh, it, was, it was basically 
it was pretty wicked, pretty, pretty crazy stuff because again, it was just so surreal. What's funny about it though is uh, towards the end when I was laying on the floor for a couple minutes and I was like, all right guys, you can come in. I'm not gonna do anything, I'm unarmed. Uh, one of the deputies was like, all right, now bark like a dog. And uh, I remember I was like, bark like a dog. <laughs> and I just snapped out of it. I was like, wait, there's nobody outside. And I, I got up and I looked outside. There wasn't not a soul outside my house. The crazy thing is, is there was a lot of confusion, a lot of arguments in my head, a lot of arguing. Uh, basically, it's just um, the people that I would hear in my head sometimes would be family members. I had an uncle that lived across the street from me. And I used to think um, him and, and my aunt would, would be talking about me, saying that they're going to call the cops on me. And, um, it was just, just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, I would have, you know, uncles that was, I had an uncle who was a retired deputy. I would hear him in my head a lot too. Um, and aunts just arguing, you know, arguing about me. Like, should we get him help or should we call the cops? And just really, really heavy stuff, you know. It was torment, basically what it was. So um, I had a neighbor who would always come and invite me uh, to church uh, for several years. And uh, every time he would come, I'd always make it a big, an excuse not to go. Sometimes I would tell my mom to talk to him and tell him I wouldn't uh, go outside, tell him I'm not here, you know? And um, I don't know, I just, he would always come no matter what. Every time um, I would see him, he'd say, I'm gonna invite you to church. And I would say, yeah, go ahead. And he would come and then, um, there was times where I said, nah, I don't want to go, so he would end up leaving. But um, one day I decided to go, you know? Um, I was like, all right, let me check this out. And I went and um, <clears throat> that was, it was crazy because uh, everything the pastor was saying was directed towards me, you know? And um, I remember giving my life to the Lord on the first time I went and I got saved. After I got saved, um, it was, it was, when I walked into Praise Chapel, it was kind of like a, how can I say, like a, a culture shock. I was raised um, Catholic, so there was a lot of, um, I had a, a heavy religious background. I even went to Catholic school, so the, the way I thought of church uh, was totally different of the way I see a Christian church. Um, so when I first walked in, I was like, kind of like in disbelief, like how is this worship? I remember seeing a band and just looking like, what is this, what's going on? You know, I remember um, just looking at the people jump up and down and shout and, and praise God. And I was just kind of like, just like, what are they doing? You know, kind of like, didn't really understand what was going on. Again, I was, I was brought up um, as a Catholic. And so I had a lot of uh, like just religion background and just the way church should be. So when I walked into the, when I walked into Praise Chapel, it was really like, it was hard for me to understand in the beginning, like what, what it was to be a Christian. So I, ha I had a lot of hesitation. Um, there was a lot of things that I was hesitant about, like going up to the altar, uh, praising and worshiping, um, a lot of disbelief. One thing that really uh, changed my perspective was um, a few months later after uh, I started going to church, I would go to the services, but I would never really interact. I would, I would just go and, and just, uh, just hang out in the back, kind of, you know, listen to the messages, um, just uh, not really get involved. Uh, but then one day, and I'm talking about four or five months later, um, my friend came to visit me. He's a pastor now, but he came and I forgot he was in my home. So uh, to get back to the voices, um, I believe uh, later on that I had filled myself up with a lot of spirits. There was a lot of demonic spirits inside of me. I just didn't understand it at the time. But uh, when I would go home, I would basically hear the voices more, get attacked more, um, have episodes of what I used to call them. And um, I forgot he was in my house one day. So when I would hear voices, I would respond back to them as well. And um, some of the voices I would hear of people I used to get high with. Um, I used to think my house was bugged. I used to think they were able to talk with walkie talkies and uh, they would basically provoke me. They would curse at me and say things about me. So I was in my kitchen while my friend was in the living room and I remember wash, washing dishes and uh, I forgot that he was there. And I ended up getting in, a, in one of my episodes and I, I got in an argument, you know, and started cursing. Now this is like me four or five months in, you know, so I was cursing with myself, saying, you guys are afraid to come out here, you know, if you show your face, I'll kick your butt, but I was like cursing, you know? And I remember turning and he was in my hallway and where the entrance of the kitchen was. And I remember him saying, he's like, hey, who are you talking to? And I remember turning and looking and, and seeing him there, I was like crushed, you know, like, just like, kind of like, I knew I was sick, but it was, embar it was embarrassing for me, you know? So I didn't like to talk about, you know, my illness, you know, and, 
And uh, when he said, who, who was I talking to? First thing I said was like, if you ever tell anybody what you just saw right here, I was like, I'll never go back to church again. You know, cause it, it hurt me, you know, to, to, I knew I was sick, but I just didn't know how to get help. I didn't know what was wrong with me. Um, and I remember he, uh, he prayed for me. He got some olive oil. Um, he prayed with me and, and um, he, he read the story of Legion to me. Uh, about, about Jesus healing this man who was filled with uh, 2,000 spirits and, and, and long story short, God healed this man. So he, he shared the story with me, but I remember I was just so embarrassed that he caught me, um, you know, arguing with myself in my house. I just wanted him to leave. So I remember him telling me that he was going to fast for me. He wanted me to fast. I didn't even know what that meant, you know, at the time. And I was just like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, but something happened to me then. Um, what I can say is my attitude kind of changed, shifted when I started going to church with him. Um, what I mean is, is before I would come with a kind of like disbelief, like, is this really church? You know, what's going on here? You know, just kind of observing in a sense. But after he found out that <clears throat> I talked to myself and I heard voices, uh, I wanted to get healed. I wanted help. So I started going up to the altar more. And I remember going up to the altar and I remember crying at the altar and I remember just, just going like every service, just telling God, I don't want to hear these voices anymore. You know, I, I don't want to be this way anymore. I want to get healed. And every service I would just go, go up to the altar and I would pray and <clears throat> I would ask God, like, God, just heal me. And he did, but I can't pinpoint the day that he healed me. All I remember is that, uh, that one day I was worshiping and, and um, instead of me going up to the altar and crying, I was actually, I noticed that I was just jumping up and down. I was excited, you know, and I was just, praising God and I remember just stopping and thinking like wait a minute I haven't been talking to myself lately you know and I started thinking about when was the last time I talked to myself and I was like man God healed me you know and I remember getting my healing um, and it was just like shocking to me you know because in the beginning I was like what is this is this church you know like wh wh why are these people jumping up and down why are these people worshiping you know and and um, I just believe that because of my faith obviously he healed me but my attitude shifted once once I knew that I needed help and once I started asking God for help, you know, that's when my healing came. Um, I think in Proverbs 30, 11, it says, or in Psalms 30, 11, um, it says that, that, you know, God will turn your mourning into dancing, you know, and that's exactly what God did to me. You know, I was mourning because I was sick in the head, you know, I was mourning because I had an illness that I didn't know how to, how to, how to deal with, you know, and I was ashamed of that illness. But the moment that my friend caught me in my house and it was finally exposed, that was the moment that I shifted and started wanting to get help. And I started going up to the altar and I started asking God to heal me. And it was because of that, I believe, because of my persistence in going up to the altar and just finally just saying, I don't care what people think about me, I wanna get healed. I don't wanna be this way no more. Uh, I believe that, that that's, that's what delivered me, ultimately delivered me, you know? And I just remember telling myself, like, God, is this, it, 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 if you're real, you know, heal me. And he did, and, and I just remember just saying, I'll, I'll, I'll never go back to my old ways. I'll never go back to, to drinking. Whatever it is you ask of me, I'm gonna do it. I've been saved since uh, 2009, uh, actually 2010, it's been 10 years. Been saved for 10 years. If you're a person that's dealt with drugs and uh, are hearing voices, um, I can tell you that God can save you. Uh, don't give up hope. Um, there's people out there that, that we're dealing or have been dealing with the things that I've dealt with and. Uh, the same way that God healed me, God can heal you. Um, you just, you just got to show up to church and you got you to tell people, um, you know, not too many people, but somebody you can trust. You got to tell them what's really wrong with you. Um, I believe the reason why I didn't get my healing right away was because I was too embarrassed and too ashamed of, of sharing what was really wrong with me. And God did expose it. And once he exposed it, you know, I started seeking help. And because of that, uh, God restored my mind, you know, and he can restore yours. Um, there's nothing God can't do. There's, you know, God can do the impossible. And even when I couldn't believe in myself, God still believed in me and he still healed me, even when I, I couldn't even understand it.